Hey, I'm Ethan Kane. I have a reservation. What? I have a reservation. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Okay, one second. Uh, it's really cold out here. I'm, I'm coming. Hi. Sorry, but Anne's not here. She didn't think you were coming. Check-in was between noon and six. Yeah, I got a late start. I mean, Casey didn't notice it's a fucking blizzard out there. Well, she didn't leave you a room key. Okay. So. Well, I'll just crash here. On your couch? Yeah, what do you want me to do? Sleep in the car? No, I wasn't <laughs> suggesting. Is there you. food? Food? Yeah, I'm starving. There's got to be something in the kitchen. I don't think you should be rooting around. Wow, around. you're really rule-oriented, huh? No, I just don't think that you Did you should. buy that bottle of wine? Ethan Kane, I would say, is like the little boy who cried wolf. He, he cried wolf in favor of a lifestyle that was like full of lights and glamour and vanity and stuff. He wanted to be famous. At his core, he has a lot of ambition to be an incredible writer, and I think that he is a really incredible writer. But he saw a shortcut. I have to finish by Friday. Is that possible? It has to be. My friend Lamet said this place was like magic for him. Lamet? Amit Falk? Yeah. You know Amit Falk? Yeah, I took a master class with him in last year and now he's a buddy of mine. Well, he and I were in school together. I told him about this place, actually. I brought him here. Right. You're Olivia Lago. Yeah, I am. When Amit told me about this place, he said that you used to come here. I've, uh, I've read your book. No, you haven't. I have. How? It's out of print. Um, he gave it to me. What do you mean? I was asking him about writers that he loved and he gave it to me. He said it was one of his favorites. <laughs> no, he didn't. Why do you sound so shocked? I haven't seen him in a long time since before he won the Pulitzer. I had no idea even. He said my book was one of his favorites. He did? He never told me that. And I love it too. So what happened? What, with Ahmed and me? No, with your writing. Oh, wow. Well. Not much, obviously. Oof, that freaks me out. Why? Because something more should have happened. Yeah, well, that's just the story sometimes. So, the first book came out. Why are you so interested? Why do we want to talk about it? It's not that I don't want to talk about it. It just feels, I don't know, personal. My character is a person who had really big dreams when she was younger and then got kind of paralyzed by self-doubt and fear and basically gave up on them. And in a way kind of pretends like those dreams don't exist anymore. You stop trying. I don't know what to tell you, I got discouraged. So we all get discouraged. Do you get paid to write? Yeah. So you're also getting some encouragement. Yeah, but you should see the shit people, especially critics have said about me. I have a couple books out, and they've done pretty well. That's great. <clears throat> yeah, but it started because I had this blog I wrote. And critics think that a book based on a blog is the lowest form of literature. One step above catalogs and fortune cookies. Did someone actually say that? Yes! People said totally horrifying things about me, to me, all the time. People also say crazy hero worship shit. I don't listen to any of it. Those chunks were just jealous. I was on the bestseller list. The bestseller list? Yeah. Which bestseller list? The uh, the New York Times bestseller list. The New York Times bestseller list? Yeah. No. Yeah. Really? A, a book based on a blog someone might call crass or misogynistic. And when you play with fire like that, certain people are less apt to believe in you anymore. He's built like a fame for himself, well, no. but it's not doing what he originally s set out to do. So you hang out in bars with a bunch of girls that you've slept with, and they all know that they've slept with you and have read about each other sleeping with you? And some of them have slept with each other. And wrote about it? Yeah, some of them. That's crazy to me. Isn't there anything you want to keep private? I guess not. <laughs> I just wouldn't want certain things, most things, especially sexual things about me available to the random stranger. Clearly, I don't mind. I do get it. Generally, not all the documentation, but having sex with strangers can be good. No expectations, no disappointments. 
Well, Sex of Strangers is a play that I discovered just reading scripts in uh, a bookstore actually one afternoon. I picked it up, thought it would look interesting, I started reading it and ended up sitting in the bookstore reading the whole thing from cover to cover uh, in about an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, and I just thought this is a great play and it, it really captures uh, two strangers who meet and uh, forge a relationship and, and, and what that entails uh, in modern society and the way we live our lives today. Is someone else coming? No. Ann called and everyone canceled because of the snow. I'm just hanging out. So it's just us? Just me, officially. Ann asked if I could look after the place while she checks on her dad up in Mackinac. I didn't mention you were here. No? Since you're not staying. I've known people like that in my real life, and that's one of the things that attracted me to this, to the people that you know they have a history, and now they're just trying to be really simple and not cause any trouble anymore, or any trouble for themselves, because they were kind of traumatized by something. But she still has this powerful dream and ambition inside of her. It's just been locked away. So then what? What, my other relationships? Yeah. I don't know, a couple great guys, a couple not so great guys. What happened to the good ones? The usual, got a job in a different city, doesn't want to get too serious, wants to be too serious. And isn't it always just a little, who knows and how does this ever work? It is. Well, I, I love this play because, uh, you know, it is a drama, but there's a lot of comedic elements to it as well. I mean, we've all been in a relationship, and relationships have their ups and downs, and I think uh, the audience is really going to be able to relate to what these two characters are going through. So where's your new book? In my room. Why? I want to read it now. Well, you can't. Come on. No. We did what we did last night, and you won't let me read your book? Nope. Why not? Too personal. Come on, I'm sure I'll love it. In the play, Olivia, of course, is in her uh, late 30s, and Ethan is in his uh, mid to late 20s. And so there's definitely a generation gap for this new couple. Um, you know, obviously, Ethan, he writes for a famous blog. He is connected to the internet 24-7. And Olivia barely knows how to use a computer. I Why would think you do it's that? brilliant. I can't believe you did that. You need to get over yourself, Olivia. People need to read this. I think... I think you should go. What? You need to go. No, no, no. You don't need to write something like this and keep it to yourself. Give it to me! Olivia. Give it to me! Okay. You had no right. I, just... I think the, I the play will be a ride for people. Me. There's... It starts really funny, and the whole thing is really energetic, and there are ups and downs emotionally. There will be times where people are laughing a lot, but I don't think when the audience leaves they're going to be laughing anymore. Wait, what about just initials? E M no. So they don't know if you're a guy or a girl? You think that'll help somehow? Well, being a woman is always such a huge advantage as an artist, and I'd like to see how I do without that. Like, okay, sure. You're kidding! But cool. I like it. Like J.K. Rowling. I like it. E.S. E.S. Thorn. E.S. Thorn. Okay. How about 29? For what? Your age. Not too young, not too old. Whatever. Okay, other profile stuff. Meaning what? You know, mm, profile information. Like, basically one sentence that totally encapsulates who you are. 